Hisuian Braviary has an exclusive signature move called Esper Wing. This is an 80 base power psychic move that has a 100% chance to raise the user's speed by one stage. We paired this with Calm Mind, and with Braviary's decent natural bulk, you can actually get this thing to set up and be out of control pretty quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really fun one for you. This team is super interesting and just results in some fun shenanigans. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300K. It'll only take you a second and it really helps out. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lead off with the absolute beast. That is Pikachu. As my opponent tosses out Fiery Donut Boy and Volcanion is actually a pretty solid matchup for me here. I could potentially you know, go for a Volt Switch here, get some super effective damage. However, I expect them to probably switch into something like the Garchomp. So instead, I'm actually just going to go for the Trailblaze here. So the reason for this is because if I can catch a nice little plus one in speed, I can then outspeed their entire team and then try to do anything I can with Pikachu. To be honest, Pikachu is basically here to <laughs> try to make a scratch in their team. Uh, this matchup isn't great for the little Pika, but they do end up switching into the Garchomp here on the Trailblaze. That gives me a plus one. I can now outspeed the Garchomp. So my plan is essentially to try to maximize the value of Pikachu, literally try to get it to do anything it possibly can. I'm just gonna go for a Surf here. Now I know that's actually not gonna end up killing this thing, but if I can catch them trying to go for a setup like a Swords Dance here, I can then two hit KO with the Surf. So I do go ahead and Surf on these hoes and it does kind of minuscule damage as they actually just end up going you know, for the Scale Shot and poor little Pikachu just dies to two of those. So. You know, was not quite able to get the Pikachu to pop off, but it's fine. Like I said, this matchup was not great for the Pika regardless, so uh, I'm fine with that. So I also didn't really expect the Garchomp to go for the Scale Shot. That does give him a nice little plus one, and we got ourselves a, a speedy Land Shark here. Luckily though, I do have an answer in the form of Mudsdale. I come out here, big ass horse, and I am pretty fit to handle an attack from the Garchomp. I know that it can do some pretty solid damage to me, but I've gotten some chip on it with the Pikachu. And I decide to just go for an Earthquake here, hoping that I can knock it out. So, let's go ahead and Quake each other. Absolutely ruin the, the schoolyard here. This place is in shambles at this point. I get some stamina, and then I Earthquake it once more. That is going to end up taking care of the Garchomp. So, that is a pretty big threat out of the way. It did do about half to Mudsdale, but honestly, taking care of Garchomp is pretty valuable. That's just a bad Pokemon for my team. And now we're sitting at plus one defense in above half. So, we're feeling pretty good. I would like to get some Stealth Rock up in this match, however... And now on the empty switch, they decide to go into the Galarian Moltres. So, this is a very interesting fella. Honestly, not the kind of guy you want to see if you don't have your answer to it, just directly out. So, they're actually going to end up going for agility. A lot of the time you do see these, they're going to be like an agility plus nasty plot set. With its ability Berserk, it can get this thing can get out of hand. Listen, it's a, it's a spicy chicken that is a little too spicy. So, I go for the Stealth Rock there. I want to just basically guarantee that I can set those up as now Mudsdale is in a very interesting spot. It does have the agility, however, I don't think it has uh, the the power to knock me out of this health. So I decided to just go for the body press as, again, yeah, they're gonna just go for the nasty plot. Exactly, pretty much what you can expect these things to do. And I really just need some chip on this guy. So I go for the body press. It actually gets a crit and knocks it exactly to half, which now gives it berserk. And I am now a horse who is in danger. Honestly, I was kind of hoed by that critical hit. It got it right into range for its ability to activate, and now I have nothing else to do essentially than just stay in here, try to get some more damage if possible, but uh, with that, uh, all the boost it's got, it's definitely going to be able to take care of me. So it has the agility boost. It doubles its speed. It has a berserk special attack boost plus the nasty plot, and that is a threat. However, I have the absolute goat bear of all time. Listen, Pokemon's coming out with new bears all the time, but you know who is the OG? Our boy Snorlax, who has not been getting enough love lately, but I should be able to take a special attack from this thing, at least one of them, and then fire off a nice little body slam. So, of course, the Fiery Wrath is going to do a nice little chunk of damage, but that just makes Snorlax hungry. We have a nice little mid-turn snack, get that Citrus Berry, brings us back up to half, and then we fire off a body slam here. So that is going to take care of the Moltres, and that it's honestly kind of crisis averted, because that thing could have easily gone for a crazy sweep. But luckily, we got the fat boy on our team. So, now this opens up the field for them to go for another free switch into the Breloom. So, this is a situation where he's likely just going to go for the Spore here. And I honestly just feel like Snorlax can just eat that sleep up. Um, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So, they go for that Spore. I figure they probably don't Swords Dance or go for like a, a Mock Punch here. Um, and now with Snorlax asleep, I'm kind of a sitting duck. So I got to get my ass out of here, but I do have uh, a pretty solid check to the Breloom in the form of the Hisuian Braviary. So 
This thing's gonna come in looking about majestic as hell. Honestly, this Braviary is like the greatest shiny that we've had in a while. And uh, I just love to put some use to this fella. So they go for the mock punch here, of course. I do resist the shit out of it, and we eat that up. So I'm in a situation here where they do have some defensive answers to the Braviary, but I'm willing to try to set this thing up because I actually believe that I have the longevity and the bulk to be able to kind of make some stuff happen here. So they're actually going to switch into the bird of their own, and they kind of look like me, except they're just made out of metal, and they go into the Corviknight. So this thing is a real pain in the ass most of the time. It comes in... Take some stealth rock damage, and then the Esper Wing is going to do a nice little chunk and also give me a speed boost. So now I find myself in a spot where I can actually outspeed, go for a Calm Mind, and now all of a sudden I'm looking pretty scary. I'm arguably the scarier bird of the two, and I know that this thing does not have an attack that can knock me out at this point. So they actually just end up going for the Defog, which is even better. A lot of the time, Corviknight with the utility. I'm not going to have a lot of investment in attack and stuff like the defog. So that basically gives me a free calm mind. And at this point, I'm like, you know what? I might as well go for another one. The reason is I do actually have the roost for the reliable recovery here. And if they do want to hit me with an attack, I can likely just get that health back. So they actually do end up going for the iron head. And this is exactly why I love to run bulky braviary. It does require a couple speed uh, boosts with that Esper wing to be fast enough. But as you're going to see here, I take that iron head no problem. And an Esper Wing, especially after that. Com uh, two Calm Mines is going to take care of the Corviknight. So now I've got two Calm Mines and two Speed Boosts with the Esper Wing. And they decide to go back into the Volcanion. Who, of course, does not come in on Stealth Rock because, you know, they blew it away. But I can just go for another Esper Wing here. And with the plus two in Special Defense, we are not afraid of the Fiery and Watery Donut over here. I know that I can take an attack. Uh, so they go for that Steam Eruption. Knocks me down to 60. While it doesn't do a lot of damage, it does actually get the burn. Which... It's mostly just annoying, but not really a huge deal. But uh, I know that I can finish this thing off with another Esper Wing. But if I can end this matchup with enough health to take at least like a Mach Punch from the Breloom or whatever, I can be in even better of a spot. So I go for the Roost here just because there's kind of no reason not to. As they just Steam Eruption again. And sadly, after the burn damage, it's not really seeming like a beneficial situation for me to just stay in here and continue to Roost. I potentially could, however, it just opens myself up to get crit. So. I just go for another Esper Wing here that is going to take care of the Volcanion, and we are out here showing them that the bird is the word, truly. Thank God for Legends Arceus and giving us ama <laughs> amazing uh, Pokemon like the Sicilian Braviary. So, now they have, again, another empty switch. I am now fast as hell. I still have that plus two special attack, and we are feeling pretty nice. So, they decide to go into the Crownization. This thing is going to get its Intrepid Sword. Braviary is not afraid of swords. I'm just going to end up going for the Air Slash. Now, the reason is... I can roll for a flinch. However, they do not unfortunately flinch there, uh, and it's going to open up the door for them to finish me off with the Behemoth Blade. But what I did do is get a huge amount of chip that basically brings it to the point where I can take care of this thing uh, with the Mian Shao. I can Choice Scarf Close Combat is going to be in range to finish it off, and then their final Pokemon is going to be that Breloom. So the Hisuian Braviary truly took an opportunity to set up that we saw and really kind of opened the game up for us. So I'll tell you what, a flinch from that air slash would have been the icing on the cake that we deserve. But uh, I just bring an old floppy here, give him the floppy hands that does take care of the Zacian. And the final Pokemon being the Breloom, it's actually in a situation where I don't believe close combat kills uh, from normal range here. But what I can do is commit the Terra as I haven't gone for a Terra here. I just give it an extra fighting stab. It's going to give me two time stab and should be enough to take care uh, of the of the mushroom over here. So we stick the fist on our head and sometimes you got to just maximize the amount of damage. And especially with Choice Scarf Man Shao, uh, being able to like outspeed everything at its like base 105 speed is honestly pretty crazy. Especially with that extra fighting stab, that close combat is going to knock out the Breloom. And uh, go find yourself back in a martini glass, you little olive mushroom boy. That's going to be the end of the match, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. For watching i do appreciate all the support on these videos lately it's actually been super fun for me to be this consistent and you guys are are making it really worth it so thank you guys i will catch you next time peace out